The following is a transcript of a conversation between Matthias de Stefano, referred to as me, and his higher self, referred to as I am. 21st January 2021, Religion. Me. Systems. If something characterizes Capricorn, is the planning of systems, the structuring of patterns in an almost architectural way. We could say that the bones, foundations, articulations of Capricorn thought are social systems. I remember that in 2011, back in September, I started a journey through the western provinces of Argentina, Salta, La Rioja, Mendoza, and Rio Negro, down the Andes to the south. All this preparing the energy of the territory for the 1111 meeting in November of that same year in Capilla del Monte. When I arrived in Mendoza, I went to Aconcagua, to the base, and sat in front of the mountain in Lake Espejo, although it was still covered with snow. I meditated, staring at the mountain, and a being appeared, a female voice whose voice I have only heard a few times in my life. She said her name was Intaka, one of the voices of Isidris, an inner city in the Andes. Her task is to guide the new generations of that land, to build a more conscious world. I asked what I had to do to achieve this, to make it possible for consciousness to rise. The answer puzzled me. It unites architects and dentists, biologists and economists, scientists and religious, musicians and doctors, educators and engineers, and when they are united, remind them who they are and when they are, they will have the power of being. The power of being, I asked, and the whispering voice said to me, Ontocracy. I am from the Greek on, ontos, participle of the verb aimi, to be, that is, it describes the quality of being, entity, and from the Greek kratos, power, onto kratos, ontocracy is the power of being, me. I understood at that moment that the purpose of what I did had nothing to do with spirituality, but that the spiritual was an internal path to build a coherent being that manifests itself as a responsible citizen. And then she showed me the logic of everything. Universal fractality. We usually call the parts of a society social organisms or systems. We also refer to the village as social body. A country then is like a physical body and its systems are the organs. She told me that one of the great human conflicts is that they live reality from utopia, that is, from the world of ideas. Sometimes it seems that beings from other dimensions have more notion of the earth than those who inhabit it day by day, she told me. Probably by the law of correspondence and polarity, those of matter tend to project ourselves into the subtle as objective, and the subtle ones are projected to the dense as path. Thus, living beings move by ideological concepts, and celestial beings move by manifested wills. This would work if, instead of setting expectations, we were aware. Then she told me the key. Move from ideology to biology. Living here and now is a real concept, not a spiritual one. Even more so if we contemplate that spiritual means one who has the quality of breathing. All of us who breathe... Seek the spirit in ideas, in utopias, you, negation, and topos, place, that is, a non-existent place, without foundations. However, the spirit is in the lungs and bronchi, in the heart that distributes oxygen, in the veins and arteries, and the same action of breathing is what nourishes the cells and the entire nervous system. We are the spirit. The spirit is not an idea, it is biological. Therefore, she said that in the interaction of different areas of knowledge, the organic will be found. A body has no precedent, no hierarchy. It is an interconnected structure of self-referential organisms. The success of evolution is not a hierarchical or representative system. It has always failed in the history of the earth. Plants, insects, fungi, animals, all of nature functions organically, and human society, believing itself superior, sought inorganic structures that do nothing but become a regenerative cancer again and again. This made me understand that my task, my mission, my purpose, is not spirituality. 
it is to remember the innate quality of the spiritual in the human, reminding us that we are cells in a body, and that if we self-refer, we will be able to build a real body, a biological body, the most advanced technology that has ever been invented in the universe. And this was the moment, because a body works by networks, tissues, and this is the time of the networks, and therefore it was necessary to reconnect the conscious network. I am. Logical. Then, to achieve this, you have to breathe deeply and connect to the spirit. And to do so, you have to go through the first human system that surrounds the idea. Religion. Me. One of the most complicated issues because it is one of the first systems generated in human culture and one of the most difficult to transcend. Why? I am. Let's get to the whys. Do you remember that hominid who stood up from a tree in the forest, looking at the horizon to see the next tree in the savannah? Me. Yes. I am. From your experience in the forest, I knew that trees bear fruit, and this generated a belief. But when the forest stopped bearing fruit, he needed to set out in search of new trees. In his belief, there was the idea that possibly, in another forest, he would find fruits, and this led him to communicate with others who thought the same, even without knowing if it would be so. They awakened, then, the sense of faith. Faith, trust, that there was something beyond the horizon. And their need led them to move, to advance. And every day they hoped to be able to find that tree with its fruits. Thus was born the concept of hope, the quality of waiting. In tradition, hominids began to share the idea that beyond the horizon there was a tree that had fruits for everyone, and their hope and faith grew in the search for that tree. Everyone, humans and animals, could feed on its branches and roots. It was an amazing idea that mobilized the first humans to populate the whole world, looking for that famous tree that everyone was talking about. They called it the Tree of Life. But no one ever found it. Then one day, one of them looked at the heavens and saw the stars and how they seemed to hang from something, from an invisible connection. Then, with his imagination, he thought, what if that tree is not on earth? What if the stars are the fruits of that cosmic tree? Then they began to see the heavens, and they understood that there were six branches and six roots, and that along them the sun and the moon danced in a specific order. They were able to measure the cycles, and they managed the time. Now they knew what was coming, they knew what to expect, and they learned to prepare for winter long before it comes, to build knowing the needs of each moment. And they understood that this tree was giving them another kind of fruit, knowledge. That's what they called it, the tree of knowledge. They said we were all seeds of this divine tree. The seeds were activated in the light of the moon and bloomed in the light of the sun. At night they called it the mother who gestates the seed in the womb of the fertile soil, and in the day they called it the father who guides them to expand through the territory. Faith and hope were deposited in heaven, and the seeds of water that came from it in the form of rain. Thus water became the vehicle of spiritual life. Where there was an oasis, a well of fresh water, it would be a sacred place, and developing peoples began to protect these wells of fresh and pure water, building temples around them, taking care of the water that came from heaven and remained on earth. The stars sent their light into matter. Me, Ater Tumti, heaven on earth. I am. The villages surrounded the cisterns and shared the water in community. They bathed in it to become divine, bathing themselves with light. They defended water, light made matter. They were all united, connected to the water and the life that emanated from it. The shamans and sages, Homo sapiens sapiens, described the divine qualities of the tree of life and its internal waters, of the stars, the sun and the moon. And throughout the Holocene period, from 12,000 years ago until today, different ways of counting their attributes were developed. Each new shaman discovered something new by drinking from its waters and eating of its fruits, and narrated his enlightenment to the groups. The stories of the sages generated spiritual thirst in the villagers who came to them for advice, hungry for knowledge. And this was good because it strengthened individuals, because it made them belong in common union. 
all taking the same baths, sharing the same affirmations of wisdom, repeating words of knowledge through chanting, prayers that became mantras. The word united them again and again in communion. Religba, then. Me. This is how religion arises. I am. Religion comes from the Latin re, repeat, over and over again intensely, and ligare, to unite, bind, tie. Think about the ancestral context. Being individuals loose by the world was equal to death. A being alone could not survive. It needed to be attached to the clan, family, group, or pack. The only way to remain was in communion, bound to one another. Therefore, every few days the group had to unite under a ceremony, in which the shaman reunited them, so that the group would be strong and remain united. Ceremony is an Etruscan name which celebrates the harvest, when the cereal, the seed, is obtained. The name originated from the goddess of agriculture, Ceres, honored in the Roman city Cere, where all the rites were carried out, which made it the only altar, from the Latin monium, unique, one. Every ceremony arises from times of the year related to the field, life, sowing, harvesting, food, through solstices, equinoxes, lunar phases, and solar cycles. Me. And how did the religions we possess today come about? I am. After centuries of repetition, each shaman or sage began to tell the story in a specific way. It is not the same to eat in Siberia as in Egypt, the Amazon, or India. In Siberia and northern Europe, the cold covers everything for six months, and the lands are not so fertile, so it is necessary to hunt and save blood. Thus, it is not the seeds that are honored, but the blood and horned animals like deer or the claws of bears. In the Nile, everything depends on the floods that make the river fertile, and therefore its ceremonies are related to water. In the Amazon, food abounds, and therefore small groups work well. Without the need to defend resources, they are kept in tribes using all the resources of plants, imitating power animals. In India, the extensive and abrupt geography divided the fertile lands into many food options, and each food was related to a divinity, the opposite of Tibet, where peace and slowness, due to a lack of oxygen, made people slow down and meditate, breathe, taking them inside. Depending on geography and climate, shamans adapted the interpretation of the great tree of life, until the time came for human expansion, and cultures met again, although many of them clashed. There began to be many different visions, and shamans began to debate which story was the best or most accurate. This made interpretation more important than information, and from that moment the stories, the speeches, the sacred texts, the dogmas emerged. The intention was to demonstrate that what they said was the truth, the only truth, and began to regulate the unity of the inhabitants in spiritual laws, a series of religious norms. Suddenly what was written was more important than what was felt. Speech was more important than truth. The people stopped looking at the sky and began to be guided by priests, who, more than interpreters of the cosmos, became minstrels of the dogmatic. Me. What is a dogma? I am. An opinion. From the Greek dokain, to give opinion. But this opinion was taught, shown as truth, which gave rise to dokto, which generates words like doctrine, doctor, teacher. Me. Opinion became a teaching, and ceased to be a reading to become a law, transforming religion into a closed system. I am. Every human needs to eat, and the need for food for the body generated the need to nourish the soul. While the tree of life nourished the bodies, the tree of knowledge nourished the soul and spirits. All the religions of the world arise from the roots and fruits of a tree. Me. Yggdrasil for the Norse, Sephirot for the Hebrews, Tree of Eden for the Christians, the Baobab of the Africans, the Celtic Oak, Sabo for the Mayans, and Ash to the Greeks, the Fig for the Buddhists, and so many others. I am, and of them God arises, because they understood that the tree blooms by the light, and the day was called Dieu, 
origin of the word God. The idea that light descends to the tree making life blossom made us think that one day God could be born in the consciousness of people or incarnated in himself, and the traditions of the Messiah of the prophets arose. Thus the settlers stopped following the concepts of nature and began to design the divine utopia of the enlightened one, of the Messiah, the Savior. The spokesmen of the prophets began to spread the message, to plan this idea, saying that if they did not join the word they would be lost, and they created the idea of hell as a counterpart to those who did not follow in the footsteps of dogma, and out of fear, hunger, and insecurity, or out of imperial obligation, the people naturalized this vision by making it their own. Me. Something that began as a way of understanding and uniting families ended up being a distorted ideological imposition of the original idea. I am. Religions are a mirage of the universe, of how the one fragmented, distorted into millions. Me. This means that every existing being is like a religion in itself. I am. Look at it this way. Everything is one. There is a single existing being which begins to divide, creating light and shadow, day and night, and from it branches like the branches and roots of a tree, in galaxies, stars, planets. And each world or sun is a fractal of the whole that binds atoms by gravity, to be part of a self-referential nucleus. But at the same time, it continues to fragment into minerals, vegetables, animals, and conscious or intelligent beings such as humans. They are distributed in new groups called species, and these in groups called cultures, and in turn within there are clans which incorporate families crossed by needs that bind them. And each individual in turn is an accumulation of cells linked together creating an organism, a body of organs, each of which is unique, linking cells and molecules that compose it, and each atom binds particles, and so on to the microcosm. Me. Everything is a religion. I am. And it's all one coming back to unity through distortion. The problem is not religions, the problem is believing that they are the truth. Me. So, if all religions accepted that they are ways to reach God, the One, we could continue to have religions without it affecting us. I am. What is a garden with the same flower? Me. A monoculture. <laughs> I am. Exactly. For a garden not to be monothematic and boring, there must be many colors and shapes. If you like roses, that doesn't mean lilies, daisies, poppies, and lilacs should be discarded or removed. That you recognize perfection in a flower that opens looking for sunlight does not detract from all others that do the same. A living garden is composed of many flowers, many ways of seeing the light. There is not just one. Different designs, colors, structures, opening at different times, some in the morning, others in the afternoon, others at night. But they are all flowers nourishing and beautifying life. The problem with religions is to believe that the garden should have only one flower. It should be monochromatic. And do you know what makes a flower like that? Me. What? I am. A plague. Me. Today we live with several pests that drown other species of flowers. I am. Because you have forgotten the most important thing a flower should do. Seek the light not prevent others from finding it or force them to do it in their own way. Me. It's as if the sunflower or the daisy force the baobab or lady of the night to bloom at noon when both bloom at night. I am. Your flower would die, and we would lose a beautiful and important vision, the brightness of these flowers during the night, catching the most subtle of lights. Me. How to transcend religion and be able to live with all of them. I am. On the one hand, it is necessary to understand that religion is not bad. The bad thing is to believe that it is the only possessor of truth. It is essential to remember that there are ways to understand and receive light in a varied garden, and that floral diversity nourishes the soil. Monoculture destroys the earth. It is diversity that nourishes the soil and makes it fertile, like the Amazon. 
the religious must remember that premise, and so religions will be useful to evolution rather than conflict. And anti-religious must remember that by believing they have truth over religions, they are doing exactly the same thing. Remember, it is light that a flower seeks. Me, and the lotus flower blooms at night. I am because it is the flower that reminds you that the greatest brightness of all is when you find the light within you. Me. I blossom like the lotus, enjoying the fertile garden in which I find myself, and unconditionally loving every free flower, joy of existence and divinity here on earth. I am. Turn faith into wisdom and hope into responsibility. Mahasa, Mahasa.